Hello, uh, Lal here. Uh, the words inductive and deductive often come up when we uh, study language teaching and also when we look at linguistics. Well, of course, these terms are not limited to the domain of language teaching or linguistics. It's there in uh, all uh, areas of study which look at how we reason and how we uh, how our, sen uh, our our faculty of cognition works. Reasoning is uh, is the way in which we try to work out what happens around us. Um, a, a different word would be the process of cognition through which again we try to reason out what is happening, what 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 has been happening around us through observation, through the knowledge that we have already got, through the new information that, that we get, etc. We, we put all these together and then construct um, an idea about a thing. Uh, in linguistics, we talk about inductive and deductive reasoning. And when we talk about learning a language or when we use English or any language, we, we have this processing going on actively in our mind. So I have two in, uh, intentions here. One is to um, look at the essential meaning of inductive and deductive reasoning. And the other is to uh, apply it to um, English language uh, learning. B both inductive and deductive kind of um, reasoning happens to us all the time in our life. Every, every, every moment you live, you have every moment you're conscious, we, we do this. And uh, look at this picture here. Uh, this is a picture uh, which almost everyone will be familiar today because of the availability of images. And people living in tropical countries like India or the southern part of India have actually seen this and experienced this quite a lot. This is evidently a forest. So people with some kind of knowledge about uh, this kind of a feature will immediately say that this is a forest and imagine a person who has not seen forests but have seen images or heard about it he or she also might uh, assume that this is a forest based on the pre-existing knowledge that he or she has so that's a deductively the person is looking at the whole from a distance and coming to an assumption it is this is an example for uh, deduction deductive reasoning where we do this processing from top downwards so initially you look at the whole and then you come to the conclusion that from my knowledge this is a forest or a, or a jungle uh, and then you move downwards so this is this is pro a processing called top down processing you look at the whole come to a conclusion and then if necessary you work down to the uh, lower levels so this is basically what happens in deductive reasoning. You, you come to a general assumption, particularly based on the uh, existing information that you have, which is called schema. We all have a schema or schemata, uh, which is the, 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 the knowledge that we have about things that we have already learned. This learning happens through every experience that we have. So I have the schema of forest. And so when I look at it immediately, I understand this is a forest. And if suppose this is, a, I have the picture of, a, or I have a description of a city like New York with so many skyscrapers. And it's a, it's a distant kind of a description. Again, I have not of the streets, but of the buildings seen from a distance. Again, I'll come to an assumption this is a metropolitan city, could be New York, could be Hong, uh, uh, Hong Kong, could be some place like that. And then I'll need to do more work and then I come down to the to the buildings themselves, to the streets and the little bricks that finally make this building. Uh, I come to the final uh, kind of uh, detailed understanding of the whole. So you, this is one option we have to do a deductive reasoning to move from the top downwards. Another kind of reasoning that we often do in life is the opposite of it. For example, you need to know what a jungle is, what a forest is, and then you decide to study the basics of it. You look at the bushes, the leaves, the undergrowth, the rocks, the vines, the little saplings, and then the trunk, and then you move upwards, and then you have you construct uh, an idea of what a forest is. Maybe an alien from another planet who has never seen a forest would need that kind of a, 
understanding <coughs> to understand the whole through the particular so this kind of reasoning is bottom up reasoning bottom up in the sense you work from the lower level the, the that's what is meant by bottom and then you move upwards uh, and reach a conclusion this is uh, what happens in inductive reasoning we look at the basic elements we work on that and then you move upwards and finally come to the conclusion this is uh, this is something that happens more in scientific research in, in a scientific research you might do a little bit of deductive reasoning for example when you submit uh, your uh, PhD proposal you have this hypothesis which initially is created through deductive reasoning you have a feeling that this is so you have a feeling that people have difficulty in uh, mastering English pronunciation and then you have to prove it and to prove it you use inductive reasoning you have to go down and then do a do several measuring techniques and then make a study and have to categorically prove that uh, this hypothesis has been right for that you need inductive reasoning and uh, this is there in all all research but this is uh, i am i am talking in relation to language learning in in processing language processing information using language also we use both kind of reasoning the initial reasoning which is the top down one will be used more by a person who is used to that information so now when i hear a story i see a picture uh, uh, not a whole story maybe the first lines of a novel or a, a few lines from a poem immediately i form an opinion because i already have a schema in my mind and then i pick clues about a, a, a lonely man who is in love or a, a forlorn uh, woman or a, a situation like that which is known to me and immediately I have this deductive understanding of what it is. But a person without that kind of knowledge will need to in, put in more effort to come to grips with the idea. He have to work with the letters and then the individual meaning etc and come to the uh, conclusion. That would be inductive. So uh, to make it more clear, deductive reasoning is top down. You come to a conclusion first or you form the theory first and then you kind of come to the lower level and then establish. We often do not uh, do all these processing, yeah, in all these stages in this particular processing. In deductive reasoning, you often form an assumption, you go on. But sometimes uh, you might need to work down and then come to the, uh, you know, the, the finer uh, details, final, finer details, I mean. So in, in inductive, it's the opposite. So you, you, uh, you've come to the conclusion only after uh, ascertaining all the basic points. So when we talk about uh, listening or reading, uh, you, we, we have uh, both these processing happens. So to a, a person very familiar with the culture of English people will be able to do more in deductive reasoning when they read or read a poem or a novel because they are familiar with the culture. They already have the schema of how an English person would behave uh, during a ball, how an English person would behave uh, during a, 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 a courting scene or how they would behave in a market or in a bank. They have a schema for all these things. So the processing will largely be in deductive. But to an initial learner, he might have to work on the, the the level of words and their pronunciation and and then words put together in chunks in in clauses etc both in listening and reading a, a, a beginner either linguistically he is a beginner or culturally he is uh, not very familiar with what he is approaching a, a, a more of inductive uh, analysis would become necessary in uh, in understanding that poem or the other book in through listening or reading and to conclude uh, with, uh, um, with a little bit of clarification, so deductive reasoning, we move from the general to the particular, a general understanding to the final points. For example, somebody says, uh, it's going to be cats and dogs today evening. So knowing that there is a lot of clouds and knowing that cats and dogs refers to the English phrase, it's raining cats and dogs. You, you deductively understand what he says. So this is about a person who knows both that clouds will create rain and that cats and dogs refers to a particular English phrase. Uh, to a person who 
will not have this information. He will need this inductive uh, reasoning where he move from the linguistic level, cats and dogs. So he will initially associate with the animal and then, uh, you know, through investigation, either through, um, you know, uh, conversation with somebody or referring to a book, he will come to the understanding that the reference is to uh, rain. So that kind of inductive thing, you might need, even, an, even a proficient uh, user of language might do inductive reasoning at times, but we go largely by directive reasoning. So when you read or listen extensively, let's go more by deductive reasoning than by inductive reasoning. That means you use a dictionary less when you do extensive reading. Even when you have a problem in deducing, uh, you might go on and look for more clues in your reading text. So that is about uh, language. Uh, but in science, uh, whatever research we do, uh, and research is generally scientific, even though in, we do the research in a topic of humanity, it has to have a scientific structure. So you, you should not make any statement without some evidence to back it. So in research, when, you, when we present a research paper, when you write a dissertation, our processing has to be largely inductive. Anyway, uh, these, both these processes are unconscious, uh, uh, but a knowledge of it will help us in, uh, in, meta -linguistic, uh, in our metalinguistic endeavors in the sense that when we try to learn linguistics, when we try to learn how people learn and use language, these, these bits of information will be of use to us. So thank you for listening.